Now in this lesson, we're going to be using a secondary color scheme to paint a landscape. And looking at the color wheel, you have your primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, which is where all the other colors come from. The secondary colors are a mixture of those primary colors. So you mix red and yellow, you get orange. Uh, blue and yellow, you get green. And blue and red, you get violet. So those are the secondary colors. Uh, violet, green, and orange. So those three plus white are what we're going to use for this exercise. And the point of it is, is to think outside the box as far as color goes. Maybe we're using colors we don't ordinarily mix together. and We can really see how they work together or how you can use them where ordinarily you wouldn't. So it's a good exercise to do. Kind of like doing color charts, only I think much better because in this exercise, you're painting an actual landscape uh, instead of just little squares. We're going to use a color scheme, again, as an exercise to think outside of the box, get you out of your comfort zone of using the same colors when you use a reference. You know, blue sky, green grass, dark green trees. Uh, with a color scheme, you're picking a certain set of colors from the color wheel and only using them. There's many different color schemes. There's uh, triadic color schemes where you pick three colors from the color wheel, equally spaced apart, plus white, and you just use those. So if we use, if we use yellow green, uh, and it, I, I think it's three spaces, one, two, three, red, violet, one, two, three, blue, green. And that's your color scheme, yellow, orange, um, red, violet, blue, green. And the yellow, orange, I would use cad yellow light with a little bit of orange to make a yellow, orange. Red, violet could be just a lizard and crimson, or you could add a bit more blue to it to make it more red, violet. But crimson is a red, violet. And then blue, green, you can either use viridian or you can use ultramarine blue with just a little bit of yellow, something that makes blue, green and then white. And, uh, and with those three colors and white, you should be able to mix anything, any type of scene, any set of colors. It won't look the same, but they'll work because these three colors plus white within a picture plane will always read right. You can have a purple sky, you can have orange trees, red grass. You know, it, if you use a set of colors from the color wheel, plus white. It'll still work. Matter of fact, it, it looks a little bit better sometimes. It, it doesn't look the same. So often we pick the same colors to mix the same things. And, I, and as an exercise, it's a good way to think differently, to realize that value is more important than color. So it really doesn't matter the color you use, it's how dark or light it is. And then whether it's warm or cool. In the color scheme, you always have warm and cool. The only time you wouldn't as much would be if we did an analogous color scheme where we picked one color and the variations of that color plus the complement. So if I want a blue painting, just variation of blue, I got blue, green, blue, blue, violet, violet. There's blue in all those colors. There's blue and green too, but I usually go with four. Then my complement would be orange because orange is the complement of blue. So you have a little bit of a warmth with these four blue colors, but the blue is going to dominate the painting. The orange will just be used to mute it a little bit and give you a little bit of variation. And same thing with you have all yellows, you have yellow, green, yellow, orange, and yellow, orange. And the complement would be violet because that's the complement of of yellow. So one more color scheme would be split complementary. So when you have complementary colors, uh, green is the complement of red. So I pick the one I want to kind of dominate. If it's red, then I split the complement and go the two colors on either side. So it'd be red, blue, green, and yellow, green. And that would be my painting plus white. And again, it's, it's uncomfortable at first because you're mixing colors you wouldn't think of mixing, but that's the point of the whole thing. And you really see how they work. And of course, you're not using straight red and straight yellow green and straight blue green. You're mixing, you're blending the colors together. I usually will have at least two of the mixtures in a color scheme together 
rarely use just one color. You can, but the whole point is to harmonize with those three colors and uh, make it work value-wise. Uh, and there's other color schemes, but we're, what we're going to use is a triadic color scheme. And triadic, again, is um, three colors equally spaced on a color wheel. Now, the most common, the most used triadic is yellow, red, and blue. Those are primary colors. They're, you know, they're mo everything comes from those three. So it's a very safe, very easy color scheme. I can mix everything I want with those and match what I see in the photograph, which again, our goal is not to match the photograph. It's to interpret and use colors on our palette that give us the best suggestion of light. But for this triadic, we're going to use secondary colors. Primary colors, yellow, blue, red. Secondary colors are green, orange, and violet. They're the colors you get when you first mix the primaries together. You know, the yellow and blue make green, the yellow and red make orange, and the red and blue make violet. So those are the secondary colors, and that's what we're going to be using. It's real effective when you do, you know, several of one color scheme of different images. So as a lesson, I would suggest doing six by eight or eight by 10 and doing two or three of uh, different photographs or, or the same photograph where you use the color scheme, the secondary colors and do two or three different photographs because it, it sinks in more times when you do it. If you just do it once, you might've noticed some different mixtures that you wouldn't do before, but when you do it several times, it starts to sink in a little bit. And if you're real ambitious, you'll do a one photograph and do two or three different color schemes just to see what happens. But uh, it's a good exercise to do. Really recommend doing it. You really learn about what the different colors on your palette will do when you mix them together, especially colors that you don't ordinarily mix. So let's go to a couple of images here. This is a uh, Colorado scene, winter. You got snow, you got green trees. And that's um, obviously in the color scheme. Then you got white snow, uh, blue shadows, blue sky, uh, kind of grayed background color. So when I look at that in a secondary color scheme, my snow is now orange. I don't know if you can notice that, but it's gone from, you know, the photograph just shows it as white. It doesn't pick up any color. So I make it a real pale orange. The shadow turns to a violet. Trees are a blue green and a yellow green. The uh, background hills are violet with a little orange in them to kind of gray them a little bit. And the trees also get lighter. They get a much lighter blue green as they recede and go back. Now on your palette, you'll have a green. Again, you could make blue with a little bit of yellow, get green or viridian. Viridian is technically a blue green, but you can you could use that if you wanted. And then to get yellow green, you add a little bit of orange. To get a bluer green, you'd add a little bit of violet. So you're going to come up with colors that don't seem to go together well, but you're going to really see how they how they act. And the trees won't necessarily look green the further back they go because you'll have more violet in them. But you will have a little bit of green. Again, these are colors you won't ordinarily mix to get what you want, but sometimes that's why our paintings all look the same, because we're using the same mixtures. So to take several different color schemes and do the same photograph, you really learn a lot. It's a lot more effective than doing color charts. I don't know if you've done color charts before, we had to in art school, uh, and it just takes everything out of context. You're just painting little squares, but if you do color charts and you're painting a painting with it, like we're doing here. We're not doing a color chart, but we're taking a, a color scheme. In effect, doing color charts by creating a, a painting. It's more effective because you're seeing it in terms of how, how it creates a painting as opposed to just tiny squares. Now this is a photograph I took in southern Utah. A lot of the colors will kind of work fairly well in here, uh, so it's not a big stretch. But here I'm using the violet clouds, orange sky. Of course, in the photograph, it's a lot. I can't mix well on the computer. Really bright down here, at the bottom of the, uh, the sky. So I couldn't blend as well in here. But I get a feeling for how the colors would work out. This is, I put this in as a violet. So 
the right value. Again, the value is always the most important thing. And then glazed over it, or the effect of an orange, a little bit lighter, wiping it off my brush and scrubbing it in there just to affect the violet, kind of warm it up. Because the photograph, the orange is the local color, but uh, the violet cools it off. So orange and violet there for the mountains. And I could add violet to the greens to make the trees recede a bit more. Violet to the grass down here to make it lighter and a bit more, uh, more cool because it's all in the shadow. And then a pretty strong violet for the distant hills to create some depth back in there. So you just want to think through the uh, colors, thinking value first, and then which color would best represent that. And it won't always be ideal. You won't feel comfortable with it. But again, if the value is right and you've warmed it or cooled it enough, it'll work. Now, same thing with this one. This is in Wyoming. Fall scene. So a lot of yellow, actually a lot of yellow and violet and kind of reddish orange. So this one is set up pretty good for that. And then going to the painting here, again, the skies are green, violet uh, mountains, gradually adding orange and green to them as they come forward. So down here, it's really orange with some violet. Back here, it's really violet with some orange um, and kind of green in the middle. We have a dark orange. This would be orange and violet for the cabin. Orange with a little bit of violet and a bit lighter for the shadow side of the trees, and of course, orange trees. So, force everything into those colors. And I didn't go over cropping much. This painting especially needs to be cropped. Way too big, too much stuff. In fact, I might even crop it like that. And you usually want to do that before you think about the color, but that makes a much better painting compositionally than that does. Well, that does. Experiment with these and do a lot of them. Experimenting and practice always works better on a smaller board. You know, feel free to use whatever size you want, but you can cover a small one a lot quicker and see the effect and the results and learn from it better than having to worry about covering a large canvas.